realignment. I will be speaking what I tie to as it is in heaven. Come and say, as it is in heaven. Open your Bible to Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. And I'm going to read it tonight. First Samuel 12, 20. I'm going to look at First Samuel 1, 12 to 20. A long reading. Matthew 6, 10. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Let's look at first Samuel chapter 1. I'm looking at verse 12 to 20. It's a very long reading, but it's important that we read it. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 12 to 20 is an account of a lady called Anna. And it came to pass as continued praying before the Lord. The line marked her mouth. Now, Anna, she spoke in her heart, only her lips moved. But her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? I put away that wine from thee. And I answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Can not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial? For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I was spoken either do. And Elias answered and said, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant thee thy petition that I have asked of him. That will be your testimony. Every petition that is coming before the Lord during this conference, the Lord will grant it to you. Your amen is weak. As he said, Let thy hand me find grace in thy sight. So the woman went away and did eat. Her cordina was no more sad. No more sadness for you anymore. Verse 19 and 20. And he rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord and returned. As you return from this conference, there will be testimony in your house. And he came to the house of Rama. And he kind of knew Anna his wife and the Lord remembered her. We have for it come to pass. It came to pass that when the time was come about after Anna had conceived and she bear his son, and calls them Samuel, say, because I have seen from the Lord. Amen. Tonight I'm looking at as it is in heaven. Come and say, as it is in heaven. I speak over your life tonight that the will of God will come to pass in your life. Your life will enter what they call realignment. Come and say, realignment. She let me hear you. If you own a car, and you always take your car for services of what they call tune up in this part of the world, you will understand what the alignment means. Now, when you buy a new tire, maybe you change the tire of your car, and you want the car to move well, to be balanced on the road, they say, Go and do what? Alignment. So, what is alignment? Before we look at what is realignment, alignment means to be conformed to things, to be in sync with things. So in our context tonight, alignment means to be conformed to the mind, to the culture, and to the understanding on the, on the agenda of God for your life. When your life realigned means you are in conformity with what God has designed for you to be. When we are aligned with things of God, it means we are operating according to how it has been written. There are some things that heaven has written concerning you. As you align during this conference, you understand what alignment means, and you align your life, things will start working for you. Your amen is weak. Alignment means you are thinking, talking, and living like God. You are thinking, come and say thinking, come and say talking, and living like God. That's what the alignment means. Everything you are doing is in sync, is in conformity with what God has designed. It means that the will of God is being done on your life on the earth as is, as a sign in heaven that's alignment it's very important to know a lot of people are operating their life out of god's pattern out of not the way god had designed them when god was calling a man called jeremiah in jeremiah chapter one you see that story there was a confirmation of the calling of god upon his life jeremiah jeremiah was hacking with god i am a child you have sent me to know. And God spoke to Jeremiah. I learned a lot from the life of Jeremiah from that conversation. God said, Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I ordained you. Amen? 
which means I existed before I came to this world. Am I right? You existed as a spirit in heaven before you came to this planet. Your ordination service was conducted in heaven. Am I right? Before your pastor called you and anointed you, you have been ordained. That's what he's saying. So Jeremiah needs to align with the will of God for the purpose of God for his life. A lot of people are running out of the original purpose for their life. And I believe during this conference, God will give you a word for realignment. Your amen is weak. Your amen is weak. So alignment means you are walking as it is written. Every time we read the Bible, you will see three things to bring out of the word of God. You see the historical part of the Bible. The history of people that have lived. So that we don't repeat history. Am I right? When you look at the life of people who had lived before, you look at the history of their life. I can be better than Jeremiah. I can be better than Daniel. My life can be better than David. I can learn the wisdom of Solomon, but I won't marry 300 wives like him. Am I right? Are you with me? And I won't have 700 concubines like him. So historical part of the Bible makes us to know that we can learn from those lives. We can also see the doctrinal part of the Bible that teaches us how to behave, how to build our character. You know, character is built. Are you with me? You build character. One of the signs that you're a child of God is that the word of God is working in your life. Now, you know, spirituality is not someone that speaks in tongues 24-7. Are you with me? Spirituality is not someone that does not do makeup and heavy, heavy makeup in church. When I was growing up, when we want to know a spiritual person, we, we always use ladies as, a, as an example. They will tell you when we are young that the lady that is spiritual does not perm her hair. Am I right? Are you with me? You don't wear ladies pants or trousers, you call it, in a, where we call, call it. But that's what we thought spirituality, but that's not spirituality. Spirituality is not even speaking in tongues, it's not praying, it's not carrying Bible or bearing Christian name. What is spirituality? Spirituality is when you are conscious of God. When you carry God in your heart 24-7. When you are in alignment with what God wants you to do, that's spirituality. Spirituality is to obey, to live by the standard of the word of God. Am I right? So if you think spirituality is praying five times a day, Muslims are doing better than us. Am I right? Are you with me? A Muslim is not afraid. They are not ashamed to spread their mat on the road and pray. Christians will be afraid to pray even in the restaurant. Am I right? How many of you have gone to a restaurant and you want to sit and you start praying? You feel like, oh, that's religion. But when you are spiritual, you see everything from the Bible point. In this service tonight, may grace for realignment come over your life. Your amen is weak. Now, let's go back to our text tonight. We have saw the story of a, a lady called Anna. Come and say Anna. Anna was married to a family, to a guy. And according to the culture of the land, Anna was not able to have children. And the culture of that time allowed the man to marry second wife. It was a culture. It was in Bible. Because when God created Adam, he never created, it created Adam and what? Eve. No Evelyn. Am I right? So a man is not allowed to marry more than one wife. But culture that came at that time allowed the husband to marry another wife. Penina. And Penina started having children. Anna could not have children. And you know how God designed the ladies' folks? They are designed to be very sensitive. Am I right? What a man does not see, lady will see ten times. Am I right? So there's a problem, a contention. And the husband will always tell Anna, I love you. Only, you. only the Lord has shot your womb. Now, it may not be the Lord has shot the womb, but the Bible writer in those days believe anything that happened to people, whether good or bad, is God. Amen? Are you with me? We all know the story. Anna will always go to Shiloh, a yearly conference like this and come to pray. Listen to me. As you come to this conference, that thing you are believing God, my God will give it to you. Your amen is weak. Your amen is weak. Anna came every year. I believe the prayer of Anna is a Lord. 
my younger wife is married, have children, show her that I can have baby. Show her that I, I, I'm also a woman. But that prayer is not in realignment with God's will. He was praying. She was praying for something, but that's not according to the alignment to God's will. Listen to me. There are things we are asking from God, but it's not in alignment with God. God doesn't work like that. May you walk in the original purpose of God for your life. So the Bible made us to know that one day, Anna pray, and that prayer eats the mind of God. May your prayer point this conference eat the mind of God. Now, at the time Anna was praying, Eli, who is supposed to be the senior pastor, the high priest, is getting older. And he's not raising the children well to take over the anointing, the mantle. So, mantle is given to people who are qualified for it. So, God was looking for who is going to take over from Eli. Can we find a woman who will allow a first child to be dedicated? That's what they call alignment. Come and say alignment. So, the mind of God and the mind of Anna was aligned. Am I right? That alignment brought the miracle to, to her. I speak over your life tonight. Something that has been pending in your life by your alignment tonight, miracle is going to happen to you. I said miracle is going to happen for you. That thing you are believing God for, my God will give it to you. My God will give it to you. So Anna's prayer came as a result of alignment with God's mind. Everyone has a problem. Who is going to replace An uh, Eli? Eli has not trained his two children. Ophini and Phineas very well. They are children of Belia. They are not well raised. They are not living by the God's standard. They are not living by the mind of God. They are not thinking and talking and living by the standard of the Bible. Something is wrong. Can we get it? someone that was going to allow a, dog, a son to take over? That was the time and I was praying, Lord, if you will give me a child, I will give back to you. And there was an alignment in the spirit. Amen. Something come together. Heaven's need. Anna's seed enter heaven. Am I right? No wonder the prayer was answered. Now, you see, what baffled me is that Eli was a backsliding prophet at that time. He was a man that God was not happy with. But God still needed the voice of Anna, Eli to approve the prayer of Anna. And what I'm saying tonight is that something is called alignment. Something aligned. May your will and the will of God align tonight. Your amen is weak. May your agenda, the agenda of God align tonight. So Anna was able to get a baby. Because it's alive. A prayer point. Aligned with God. Every time you come before the Lord and you're asking God for something, it must align with his will, with his purpose. A lot of Christians today have forgotten that our, our source is God. Everything we do must align with the will of God. Amen. Lord, I need, to, I need a new job. I need a new race. God is thinking in his mind. Is what you are asking from me aligned with my purpose for your life? With my original purpose? One of the tragedies that can happen to Christians is to be doing things against the will of God. Amen. To have your agenda that's not working with the will of God. Anna has been praying year after year. She has been crying year after year. But this particular year, heaven need a baby. Heaven need a son. Heaven need someone that will allow a child to, to become the Eli's assistant. And Anna walk with the God's power way. May the way of God be your way. Your amen is weak. When we walk outside the alignment, outside the will of God, outside the purpose of God for our life, things don't work for us. Amen. There are times you want to do certain things in your life. And God said, that's not my way. I will not allow it to happen. But the moment we allow God, God, if you use me, if you allow me, I will let it happen. Do you know it's very difficult for Anna to allow the first child? Imagine you are waiting for children for years. And the next prayer you are praying is that, Lord, if you give me this child, I will give back to you. You know it's not easy. Some of you, the first day your child went to school, 
and you drop that child in school, you look back, the child look back, and both of you are crying. How many of you have been there? Are you with me? This is a child that is still coming back home. But this woman had the only child. Come and say only. Are you with me? Have you ever met people that have only one child before? Oh my God. If the child is headache, they have headache. Are you with me? Is somebody hearing me now? But Anna allowed a will to be buried in the will of God. Am I right? He said, if you give me this child, I will do what? I will give back to you. And we all know this story. When the time came, it, she carried the child to Eli and said, Eli, I'm releasing this child as I have vowed before the Lord. And heaven opened for her. And she has more children. May we flow in the alignment with God. Your amen is weak. Maybe there are some lifestyle we are living today that we need to examine. Lord, what I'm doing right now, you see your will. Maybe there are work we are doing right now that we need to check. Am I doing it according to your will? Am I in alignment with what you designed for my life? To be alignment, to conform to the will of God. To conform to the mind of God. To conform with the thinking of what God is thinking is what you are thinking. That's alignment. When you, when you are out of alignment, things don't work for us. We struggle a lot. I hope you know that you came to this planet on assignment. Come on, on assignment. Say, let me hear you. I'm on assignment. That is very clear. Jeremiah was arguing with God. God said, Jeremiah, I have called you. I have ordained you a prophet to the nation. Jeremiah was afraid. I am a child. I cannot do it. God said, no. Your ordination service is heaven in heaven. You existed in heaven before you came here. Which means all of us here, we are spirit in heaven before we are released here. Amen. Your beginning is not even here. Your beginning on the earth is your date of birth. But you existed in heaven. You are a spirit in heaven. He said, I have ordained you. You are on assignment. If there's something I'm praying for you to realize in this conference, you will realize your assignment. You will know your purpose. You will know what God has sent you to do. You will not miss it. Come on, say, I will not miss it. A lot of people miss it in this planet earth and they are doing nothing. They thought they are working for God, but they are not doing it. Alignment means you know that this is what God wants me to do. This is exactly what I'm called to do. God frustrates effort that is not in alignment with him. Amen. God himself will frustrate that effort. And if God is fighting someone, who can fight for you? Nobody. Amen. If God is saying, I don't want you in that way. Look at a man called Jonah. Come and say Jonah. You know Jonah was sent by God to go to Nineveh to go and preach. And Jonah said, God, I know. If I go and prophesy to them and they, rep they will repent and you will call me a liar. I'm not going. And Jonah, instead of going to Nineveh, he went to Tashish. Am I right? On the way, God frustrated the effort. He even caused problems for people. When we are not in alignment, people around us, they are in trouble. Are you with me? When, I, when we are not in alignment, when we do business with people, that business can scatter because we are not in alignment. We all know the story of Jonah. The people discovered that the ship was about to be, be, have an accident. They were doing everything to make it work. And they cast a lot. And the Lord fell on Jonah. That Jonah is a wrong person. And they throw him inside the water. Am I right? But God prepared a big fish to swallow him. Amen. Who is a typology of Jesus Christ being in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. From the belly of the fish he prayed. And God commanded the fish to, to vomit him to the labor stop he's going. Come on say alignment. May your life be in the alignment tonight. May you be in the will of God. May you be in the purpose of God. May you do what God has sent you to do. Come and say, I receive it. Come and say, I receive it. I remember my story. When I finished Bible school, 1988, my father was alive and he said, I want you to go to the city authority, let them give you a posting. And I was posted to be that Niger State. 
There's a place called Niger City in Africa called Bida. And I was posted to that church. The church, the pastor of that church was a friend of my father, the senior pastor. And they allowed me, they asked me to preach. I mean, the young Bible school student, you know what to say. I preached that day and everybody said, oh, we love him. He's a young man. And they gave me a house. Everything was done. And I was ready. I came back to my hometown to pack my load. I was happy. I'm going to resume to be Janaija State. I'm going to be the assistant pastor there. Suddenly, I went to see one of my uh, senior in the Bible school who has also been posted to a church. Why I entered, we entered the church, I was telling him I will be resuming in my new station as a young pastor. While we are talking, he said, oh, there is a prophet in the, inside the church. He's doing the revival for me. That prophet was a friend of my father. He's a, he's a blind man. So as I knocked the door, the prophet just said, Fen, why you are here? Don't go to be there. That's not where God is sending you. I said, oh, no, 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 no. I said, Baba, God sent me there. He said, God did not send you there. Ah, ah. He said, go to a place. I saw a place where there is ocean. That is where you are going to go. If you go to be there, you are out of the will of God for your life. And I said, oh, but I don't like Lagos. I said, I, I, we didn't start praying. As soon as I knocked the door, the man started speaking. Praise God. I was, I, I told my friend, Pastor Iman, I said, why did you come here? I don't like this kind of message. Why would this man be saying this? The man said, have you, have you had you finish? I said, yes. Did you tell me where you are coming from? I said, no. Did I know where you're supposed to go? He said, why you are coming out of the vehicle? An angel stood by me. And he told me, I should tell you, you are about to go out of alignment. You are going to go into what God is not sending you to. Amen. Because I love the church I already go. I say, wow, this is the best place to be. Some of you are in a place that you are not supposed to be. But the time we are finishing this conference, somebody's moving. I don't know whether you hear me. I say, somebody's moving. You'll be at the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing. So, I came back home sad. I was feeling sad. I said, God, why? I thought you said I should go to this place. So I went to my dad. My dad said, don't worry. You will go to Lagos. I meet my friend. That is the father of Pastor Joseph. <laughs> go and meet him. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> go and meet him. So I came. And daddy said, okay. You are, you are finished Bible school? Okay, come around. So after spending about one month, he said, well, I wish I can have a space for you. No space for you. Praise God. I said, this prophet did not see well. I said, how can I came now to Lagos. He said, I should be. And he said, there's no space. Praise God. Amen. So I started fasting and praying. Confused. But there's no confusion. God knows your tomorrow. You know where you're supposed to be. Amen. So, I went back and I told my dad, this is what Pastor Father Jimmy said. My dad said, no, let's continue to pray. After a week, Pastor Father Jimmy called me back. He said, you are coming back. A space has been created for you. Are you with me? The, the, the associate pastor here is being sent to, for further training. And now that you have come, all the people prefer you to take over. So, a space was created. I don't know a space that has been created for you this week. That place you need to walk. That relationship you need to enter. As you are moving in alignment, that space will be created. Your amen is weak. Your amen is weak. And I came into that place. History, we are here now. Am I right? What about if I have gone to Bida in Niger State? I will have been out of the will of God. Out of alignment. And when you are out of alignment, you miss it. Amen. I always pray, Lord, let me be in your will. Not out of your will. Let me do exactly what you want me to do. Let me think the way you are thinking. Amen. Many people today, they are missing because they are out of the alignment. They are not in the will of God. They are not in seeing what God has designed them to be. Amen. 
Now every time I think about that thing, I say, God, I will have missed my destiny. I was even arguing with the man because he's, a, he's my father's friend. I know him. He always comes to the revival. He's a blind man. He didn't see, but he's a prophet. I didn't even, I have not even greeted him. I was just knocking the door with my friend, Pastor Emmanuel. And he just said, hey, Fen, why you are here, Amos? I said, yes. Angel told me you should not go to Bida. I said, no, 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 no. I'm going there. He said, you should not go there. You're going to be out of the wheel for your life. Amen. The prayer this night, nice, Lord, am I in your wheel? Am I in your, am I doing what you want me to do? During this conference, Lord, speak to me. Amen. Lord, speak to me. Do you know God will speak to you? Because his will is what you're supposed to be. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody lift up your hands tonight. I just begin to thank him for what he's doing. Rebo Shade Kaye. Rebo Shade Kaye. Rebo Shade Kaye. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Rebo Shade Rabababa Sendakai Rebo Shade Kaye Rabake Sade Ye Rabake Sade Rebo Shade In Jesus' name we pray. One of the ways to be in a realignment with God is to allow the Holy Spirit to take over. Are you with me? You allow the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is with you 24-7. But flesh does not allow him in our life. There is nothing called more of the Spirit. Holy Spirit does not increase. Are you with me? One of the reasons Holy Spirit is not speaking to us is because flesh are dominated everywhere. Am I right? Flesh. Come and say flesh. You know, one day I ask, what happened every time we are in a prayer and fasting? Usually when we are doing a long fasting in church, your dream life will be very clear. Am I right? You start seeing what you are not seeing before. And the Lord spoke to me. Holy Spirit is always in us. Emmanuel, God with us. But flesh dominates the spirit in our life. But when we allow him, when we give him his right place, he starts talking to us. Amen. It's important to mention Holy Spirit at all times. Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? Holy Spirit, how do you want me to do it? Holy Spirit, what is your will for my life? Where do you want me to be? I want you to depend on that Holy Spirit so that it would guide you. It will tell you what, when to stop, when to stay, what to do. It will check you when you are doing something wrong. Amen. May the Holy Spirit take over your life. May you allow that spirit to take over. May you give him the right place. When you allow him to take the right place, he starts guiding you. He's in charge of this planet. He's the executor of the will of God in this time. When you allow him, Holy Spirit, I need you. Take over my life. I'm not going to struggle with you anymore. I'm going to hand over my life to you. Holy Spirit, take over. There are many decisions that I've taken in my life that are wrong. Many. But every time, every time I come back to the Holy Spirit, He will always tell me, this is my will. This is my will for you. This is my will. This is how I want it. Amen. It's very important to allow Him. Amen. Sometimes our will, our mind, our brain is too much to allow the Holy Spirit to work with it. Amen. In the olden days, God always called people that have not developed their mind a lot. Illiterate are more first call into ministry in those days. Amen? Because when you are too intelligent and educated, your brain will be fighting everything the Holy Spirit is telling you. Amen? If the Holy Spirit says, stand up, you say, why? Why? Praise God. Holy Spirit says, go into three days fasting, say, Why? But when you are dealing with the Holy Spirit, you don't say why. You obey. Trust and obey. For there is no or thy way to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey. 
You know, when you came into this auditorium tonight, you didn't feel that chair, whether you would fall if you enter there. You just trust the chair. Am I right? That's how exactly we trust. We trust our pilot without knowing him. Am I right? You don't even know the pilot. You just trust the airline. Praise God. When I was coming, I entered Virgin Atlantic. I don't know the pilot. I just know the airline. Am I right? And we just enter and they lock up. And the pilot just announced. I can't even remember the name of the captain. And I just trust that it will take me to, to London, from London to New York. It's just a trust. Praise God. Already making plan how I'm going to run when I come. With a trust on the pilot. Amen. What about if you can trust the Holy Spirit with our life? And say, today I surrender to you. Just take over my life. Do as you like. Let your will be done. Amen. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. How many of you would like to trust the Holy Spirit for the rest of your life? You're going to hand over your life to him. Amen. It's very important. Very important. You know, when my wife passed, it was like a shock. For the years I've lived, I've been a Christian. Now, if I tell you there is no premonition, when I was to marry my wife 30 something years ago, a prophet told me, one prophet told me, he said, you marry this lady, but you, you remarry after many years. I said, no, I, I reject that spirit. Praise God. And I'm still rejecting it up to now. But the truth is, God knows everything about your life. He knows your end from the beginning. Amen? Nothing happened to me that I don't know. Praise God. Are you with me? To the extent that when I want to dress and wear suits, I will know what, what to wear. When I wanted to come to the service today, this is suit I like to wear. Praise God. But I discovered I wear this suit not too long. And now I have another suit. I told my son, I have another suit for me. When I now wear that suit, it was too tight. And I went back to this. The Holy Spirit, but I told you to wear this. Praise God. To the minutest thing. Minutest thing. Praise God. Are you with me? The surgery that make her die. We prayed about it. We know. We, we thought everything is covered. But God is real. God is what? Anything he wants to show you is what he will show you. Are you with me? You know the question people are asking. But you are a prophet. Amen. Even my spiritual father said to me, I can't believe this will happen. You told me this. You told me this. You told me this and it come to pass. How manage? I said, God is God. He's greater than me. But we still trust him no matter what happened. Am I right? Our faith will never go down. Are you with me? We are not serving him for everything to be good. We are serving him because we have to follow him. We have to trust him no matter what happened. In this conference, I want you to open your heart and let the Holy Spirit take over. Realign with him.